Welcome back to Flashpoint. This week, the Republican Party stripped Congresswoman Liz Cheney of her leadership position, all because she continued to say that last year's election was not stolen and that President uh, Trump incited a riot at the Capitol to try and stop the election results from being certified. The vote to remove her done behind closed doors with a voice vote, no recorded tallies. After the vote, Cheney pledged her commitment to conservatism and, and vowed to do everything she could prevent President Trump from getting near the Oval Office again. Joining us today, Pat McCrory, running for a uh, U.S. Senator, um, once a mayor of Charlotte for, for multiple terms, also uh, governor of North Carolina as well. It, it, is the GOP a big tent party or not? Oh, absolutely. But after every presidential election where the president loses, there's internal warfare. And this happened when Hillary Clinton lost. God, just remember just a few years ago, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, they were fighting each other, and it, it takes about a year to get through those internal struggles. But there's one group that's going to unite us, and that's Biden, Harris, Schumer, and Pelosi and their policies. And their policies have gone to the radical left. I don't know what's happened to the moderate Democrat. They seem to have disappeared in Washington, D.C., and frankly, even here in the state of North Carolina and in Charlotte. But the moderate Democrat has been pushed out of the party, and... Um, there, wait, That's there, what's going to unite us. There with, are people yelling at the TV screen right now and saying, wait a second, what happened to the modern Republican Party? It, it's, it's gone crazy as well. So as you say that about Democrats, there are just as many people saying the same thing about the modern Republican Party. And someone like a Liz Cheney, who by all means is as conservative as they come by most standards, um, there's think tanks out there who have graded her a, a, as being as such. Um, if she can't be in party leadership, then, then who can? I mean, you talked about Democrats a few years ago. They weren't looking to bounce out AOC because she didn't like Biden either. And now Liz Cheney's getting banished. Oh, they were looking to bounce out AOC. There was internal warfare in a lot of areas within the Democratic Party. And listen, I'm a I'm not getting involved in the soap operas. I'm getting involved in, I'm talking about issues. I'm talking about immigration, which I've had to deal with as a governor and a mayor, which is impacting our state, by the way. The illegal immigration by the cartels coming across in Arizona, New Mexico, California, Texas, are coming to North Carolina. We had a Monroe teacher that was killed in, with working with the Mexican cartels. Those are the issues that are along I-85, I-40, I-77. We have cartel activity right now, and it's growing. Those are the issues that I'm interested in, not internal squabbles that are meaningless when it comes to policy issues that this nation has to deal with. And that's what I did as a mayor, governor, and city councilman, is deal with the policy issues at hand that um, are going to be important for the next generation, not just the next election. Sure, no, and that's why we led this discussion with those some of those policy issues. Um, what what kind of not just Republican, but but what kind of uh, lawmaker would you see yourself being on on Capitol Hill? I mean, uh, time and time again here on Flashpoint, we talk about whether you want to be a conservative or you want to be a, a, a you know a liberal. Everybody should want, everybody, taxpayers should want effective governance more than anything. <laughs> whether you like it or not, at least make it effective because we are paying for it. Um, at the same time, in, in a lot of cases, you know, whether you put your, you, you in this Senate seat or somebody else, 95 percent of Republicans will always vote Republicans and 95 percent of Democrats will always vote for Democrats. And then on occasion, you have somebody like a Joe Manchin who really speaks up against his party and is not always popular, or a Susan Collins or a Lisa Murkowski, um, who actually goes against the other people in their party and does it, does it proudly and doesn't mind that they, they get flack for it. Could Pat McCrory be somebody like that who does sort of his own thing and, and has a certain maverick status? I, you know, I go issue by issue. I don't fall into a broad category. I look at public safety. I look at immigration. I look at energy. I look at education. All these issues fall into so many different complex areas. Healthcare is another. I, would, I take issue at a time and try to find long-term solutions to issues just like I did as governor when I, I changed the whole formula on transportation, just like I did with light rail in the city of Charlotte, which has been quite successful along the South Line and up the UNCC. I try to come up with long-term vision and plans. You know, I, I look at people like Rick Scott, former governor that I served with, now U.S. Senator. He's a problem solver. I like solving problems, and that's the only reason 
I'm going to DC to try to bring some of the problem solving techniques that I use as a city council, mayor, governor, and a business person up to DC. And if I can get coalitions between Democrats, Republicans, independents, fine, but I'm gonna bring up the solutions that I think are best for the next generation and that are long-term, not, not just putting out short-term fires like I think some of the legislation's going on now where we're borrowing money for operating costs. That's a total financial fiscal disaster, which is going on right now. Bringing on this debt to pay operating costs, for example, the infrastructure bill, is not an infrastructure bill. 80% of that is for operating funds for things that have nothing to do with infrastructure. I know infrastructure probably as much or better than any U.S. Senator, and I think a lot better than our current president and vice president, because I have actually built infrastructure. I know how to, it's paid for, I know it's how constructed, and I know how to bring about a long-term vision. And um, I did that as governor, connecting North Carolina, east, west, southwest, and, and connecting Charlotte with various different types of uh, transportation. So I've done it. I've been there. And that's why I'm running for this seat and why I think I am uh, simply the best person for this seat. Final, final question real quick. Um, th this past week, we got good news from the CDC saying folks can now stop wearing masks. It, it really does just feel like this week is almost like, hey, we are almost back to normal. I mean, it, it was a long time coming for everybody involved, and I know you agree. What do we do? To you know, why, sure why aren't we doing that right today? Why, what, what why are we, we, we do to make sure we don't, this does not happen again? And, and that we go back to our previous conversation, that government response is better in a situation like this. Well, it was a combination of government. You know, first of all, you got to give uh, Operation Warp Speed a lot of credit where both research and then private sector brought in a medicine that I've taken. That's it's a miracle that we've done this. It's an absolutely miracle. And the implementation was good. There was some very inconsistent policy that wrecked some businesses that that I, I question. You know, why we opened breweries but closed bars and we called it science from Governor Cooper's office, science that you open close bars and open breweries. Where in the heck is the science there? Now that had to do with politics, where you make high school kids wear masks playing basketball games, but you don't require the Hornets or the college basketball players to wear it. There's no science there. So a little inconsistency in the application, which which costs a lot of people their jobs, but overall, man, we got to get through this. And now that CDC has made their announcement, I hope the state moves a little quicker, <laughs> like immediately and, and starts applying the rules of the CDC. All right, a one-time Flashpoint regular panelist making a triumphant return, this time as a U.S. Senate candidate. Uh, Pat McCrory, Pat, thank you, don't be a stranger. Uh, call anytime. Thank you very much. Right. Good to be here in Charlotte. Take care. More Flashpoint after this.